damn simple. The best ones are. You want the mercy? Play by the rules. Any identification on the victim? Who's a beast? But she's not. He's been dead for ten years. It's not him. Can't be. This was on the body. The truth will set you free. Help! <laughs> Blood under the fingernails of our victim, John Kramer, the jigsaw killer. That's impossible. It's not creepy at all. Uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. I love that trailer. It's really fun. Really fun stuff. Yeah. What, uh, what, you know, it seems to me by using that song in the trailer, you're adding, injecting a little bit of humor into the franchise now. It's, Franchise has always had a little bit of it, but not in not in that way. What brought that about? Was that just the trailer, or did you try to put that into the movie this time around as well? It's more the trailer. I mean, we obviously we didn't really want to just make another Saw movie, so we really revamped this as far as the look, the color, the sound, um, a lot of new characters. So for us, it's outside, which has never been a, a Saw movie. It's a little less claustrophobic. And um, so we kind of wanted to give people something a little different in the trailer than just straight bam, bam, bam. But, but there is a, there's very much a sarcastic tone to, to the movie. I mean, there, there is more, more humor than, the, we've never had any humor. So now there is a, we don't, I don't know if you want to call it tongue in cheek humor, but it's kind of, there, there's, there's some laughs. Well, uh, Jigsaw's always been a kind of a boogeyman who likes to play, obviously, with his victims in the same way that the classic boogeyman of the of like Kruger like to do. And it seems that it would make sense to add, inject even more of a, a sense of humor for him. Well, you know, Jigsaw never went after, never killed anybody, never put anybody in a trap that really didn't deserve to be there. Yeah. So, uh, Tobin, what brings you back? What made you want to come back to Jigsaw? That's one of the elements that Mark is talking about. When, when, what? Oh, uh, yeah. That, that Mark is talking about. Uh, <clears throat> there's a, a layer in Saw movies that uh, I think fascinates fans that um, because uh, um, each of the films make you think at different points in time. And uh, um, even if it's one line or several lines that... Um, all of a sudden juxtaposed against the intensity and the chaos that's going on in a Saw film, there's, there's a thought or an idea that I think fans relate to and uh, makes people think. And every time I talk to fans, they want to talk about those, those elements that it's a testament to the writers and uh, to the people that put the films together that those elements are there. Started with James Wan and Lee Wan L in, in number one. Well, let's go back to to the be to the beginning. What did you think when you first got cast in uh, in Saw? I thought the same thing I always think, which is do the do the best job that you can do. And uh, there were fascinating elements to it. Uh, 
not the least of which. How many people have seen Saw 1? Okay. So I can talk. But let's be honest. Okay. Didn't Tobin do a great job of playing dead? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, All right. Hey, we have one question. Because every once in a while, someone will say to us, oh, I knew he was alive. Did anyone really know that he was alive and going to stand up? Yeah. Thank you. Because when people say that to me sometimes, I'm like, come on. Yeah. Like, yeah. we forgot he was there. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> I think he laid Wait, I want to say one thing really quickly. We already had the prosthetic for his head being blown off, or, you know, the prosthetic he wore and saw one. We offered to have him to build a dummy, because we didn't want him to have to sit on the complete concrete floor, no pad, for six days. It was cold, it was dirty, it, it was, was awful. awful. Yeah. And, I mean, you've all seen that bathroom. I mean, and... and we didn't clean it. And Tobin literally said, no, I, I want to... Well, I don't want to... So, to, so we argued. We said, no, no, you don't have to do it. You can come up at, in, in the appropriate time. And Tobin? I, I didn't opt for that because um, if John Kramer has been lying there for four hours or however long it takes for an hour and a half or whatever it is, actually he was there longer than from the beginning of the film. He was, he was there for maybe an hour before that. So let's say he's there for three hours. If I have to get up convincingly at the end of this period with, with uh, what would happen to your body after three hours of lying in the same position on the floor, I wanted to be able to get up in a believable way. Uh, so I continued to lie there so I would have suffered uh, enough over the period of the film that when I got up it would be reflected in my body. And I worked hard to do that. And then thank you, James Wan, because James came to me after the first time I got up off the floor and he said, um, a little more of, of the, the, how you would, so I just added a little bit more to it and that's the take that they used and I can see it, that kind of stiffness, you know, that, it's not just get up and take the thing off. It's how you get up. And so that's why I wanted to, I said, no, shit, no. I'm, I'm, I'm lying on that floor because this is my moment and I better do it well. You know? And that's why he's here. When you, guys, when you guys made the first saw, did you have a franchise in mind already? No. No. Come on. We just wanted to get our money back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, 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 in the, 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 yes, the, the short answer or the, or the long answer is absolutely not. We didn't have a clue. Well, the guy, the guy, you know. We didn't have a sequel deal, which actually turned out to be the best thing in the world. Why is that? Because the, then they really was, wanted one, and there was no deal. No, nobody wasn't thought like, there was a sequel to the movie. There was a sequel to the movie, so we did a simple one-picture deal with Lionsgate. I'm sure some business affairs person got fired, but um, and eventually, after Sundance and Toronto Film Festival, and before it was released. They came to us and said, "You guys got to start thinking of another one." So, so now the last one saw 3D was 2010, right? Yep. So it's been seven years since the since the last saw. Se film. Seven and seven, and then seven years off. Seven and seven, and seven years off. Wow. Yep. And now, what made you want to come back after seven years off? Or was that the plan? Seven and seven, and then seven years off. No, no, <laughs> no. We. Uh met with a bunch of writers through the years and every now and then we'd kind of call each other up and say you know should we do another one and, and we couldn't come up with a good idea we didn't have anything and then these two writers came to Oren and pitched him an idea for Saw and then Oren called me up and he goes you got to hear this and literally it was that good an idea with as big a twist at the end as Saw One. And that was our goal just and I want to because one, we loved Saw 1, and we felt we did seven and seven years, and we were really rushed because they wouldn't greenlight the next movie until the one previous had come out. So all of a sudden, it's Thanksgiving, and then you roll into Christmas, and we're like, oh, man, we got to go make another movie. We don't have a script. We don't have an actor. And we just really And it's did, coming out in 10 months. Yeah, and we had to deliver the film, so that was an extra month earlier compared to now. So long story short is we had the luxury of time, and we, someone brought us an idea and we decided to put the gang back together. But the, for us, the greatest luxury was we had time to get a great cast, to get, it, it just, we did, weren't rushing. And great directors as well. You guys were able to, to, to nab some really fantastic directors. That was, based on that idea, very early on, the Spirits came on. 
and I don't know if any of you guys have seen Daybreakers. Or, I mean, it's a great movie. And, and Predestination is a really, yeah. really smart film. You have to see it twice to understand it. It's really yeah. cool. <laughs> so anyway, so kind of the momentum of an idea and then an outline and then the spirits put us into a different level mentally too. We were just ready to go. And but the, great, the greatest pleasure we had was time to go make it right. Let's get, uh, let's get a little sick. What's your favorite death scene from the movies? Obviously, you can't say anyone in anything in this one, but what's your favorite death scene? Uh, I, the word favorite. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I let's favorite just stop scene. right there, you know. Because uh, I, 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 John, he, he doesn't think in those terms. Um, and so, but I will tell you that in terms of, uh, I like the um, situations where people's karma comes back to greet them and uh, where you find that in fact you do reap what you sow perhaps I mean the, the whole issue of whether karma exists or it doesn't exist is a big issue in Saw films uh, and you can go one way or the other with it and that's one of the other things that make people think when they watch these films so I like the uh, scenes where um, it's clear that um, people have uh, come back to what they created in, in their lives. And I think there's an element of truth in that. And I think most people do. I like the scene in Saw 3D where the rods go through her eyes. <laughs> oh. yeah. It was the one I was going to pick. Yeah. No, I know. Okay. Guys, what about you? Yeah. Yeah. He uses the word like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> For me, it was favorite. My yeah. probably favorite one and the one I think about the most is the, I think one of the simplest ones we ever did is the uh, needle pit, where Amanda goes oh. in the, th the, the pit and comes out with all the needles stuck to her. I mean, it's the simplest, you know, to understand the simple, but it's the one that just makes me cringe the worst. Yeah, I and, just it, like, and it made Shawnee uh, Smith, who played Amanda, it was so clearly developed what her malady was, and the fact that she had to go into that pit, you could see how how difficult it was for her. She played that scene really well. I like them all. I think maybe Donnie Wahlberg getting getting crushed in the head with the ice blocks was kind of <laughs> cool oh, way of yeah. going. But we yeah. we have. Uh, we have some really good ones in this upcoming movie that we kind of sat around a table at a restaurant, or to myself and the writers, and I think we, we scared the crap out of all the people around us because people were kind of listening in, like, "Well, should we kill them with water? Should we kill them with fire? How do you think we should?" Like, to get excited, you know. And excited. Like, no, no, wait. What if this happens? And literally, we're in a crowded little Italian restaurant in Los Angeles. I, I'm surprised the cops didn't come. Yeah. We probably sat for three or four double servings and just... Within about 15 minutes, all the tables around us cleared out. It was kind of cool. So how often were you guys taking pitches over the last seven years for potential for potentially coming back you to Saw? What? All of us were doing it separately. Um, Jason Constantine, Ida Cowan at Lionsgate. Every once in a while, an agent would call and say, oh, I have a client who said they have a great take. Um, I, we kind of put it out there. Mark probably it, between us all, probably 100. This was the one that really grabbed you. What was the, What was the? What was it about this pitch? Like, what? What did? What did they say? How did back. they pitch it? What? What Mark and I, I started, and I, I think I got myself sidetracked. One of the things we really wanted to do was bring it back to, to Saw One. We wanted one of the most exciting things for me ever was to sit. We were on the side of the stage when we were testing the movie, and when Tobin stood up, people literally went like, "What?" I mean, they literally got out of their seats. And we were at the side of the stage in Las Vegas in this uh, little theater. So for me, I said, you know, we really lost that, you know, I don't know how to, you know, just the whoa yeah. of, a, of a twist which just makes you think, and you'll be driving home going, wow, so if this is this, and this is this, yeah. and it's kind of like the usual suspects ending, or where, where, you know, all of a sudden he's walking down the street. So for us, we wanted to get back to the moment where Tobin stood up, met, not in him standing up again, but in that kind of, so we wanted an ending that made you say, oh, shit. And kind of a, not to be corny here, but kind of a jigsaw as well. Something that people are trying to put together as they're going home. We, we, yeah, out. that's what I mean. When they're leaving, but I want people to, you know, and I say, I, we want people to leave the theater talking, going, wait, so if the X is Y and Y is Z, then is Z, you know, I mean, yeah. and so it's ex 
we, all of a sudden they came to the idea with a twist that I, w I literally couldn't wait to call Mark. We get uh, to the end of this movie, and, and we've read so many things online based on the trailer and photographs and stuff that's come out. Yeah, don't about, believe Reddit. About stuff that, <laughs> oh, the ending is this, the ending is that. Nobody's even close yet. But we take you know? it as a compliment. There's all these sites that will take the trailer and, you know, what you guys just saw, and there's some still photos, and then there's our composer did an interview in some composing magazine that has some cues that he said. He says something in some you know, words. And so everyone thinks they have the movie, like they, all, these, all these sites that have been sending us, this is what the movie is. No one's close. And I mean that it, truthfully. Yeah. So. Tell me, what made you want to return as Jigsaw? He's a big guy, you know? He's got uh, a huge dimension as a character. He's a, um, a bit of a philosopher, a bit of a theologian, a, a trained mechanical engineer, a, an architect. Uh, he reads a lot. Uh, he has a multiplicity of interests. He's kind of Lear-like in his dimension. And uh, whenever you can play a character like that over seven, seven films now, eight, um, it's a marvelous thing. It doesn't happen that often. And uh, I'm excited about the idea of millennials, who many of whom were too young to come to the theater seven years ago. Uh, we're going to have our old fans plus uh, a whole host of new fans who uh, are going to bring an awareness of what the world is today, which is different than what it was seven years ago to this movie, which is, I think, gonna be huge. We, we, we work with the writers for weeks, months, getting the script, and, and the, the scariest time for Warren and myself is when we have to send the script to Tobin. Because he's like, I'm interested, but I'm not gonna commit just yet. And it's like, man, I hope he likes it, hope he says yes, because how do you do a movie without Tobin part of it, whether he's in it or his voice or flashback or flash forward yeah. or a video, there's, there's always got to be something of, of him in this. And then he'll say, yeah, I'm in, but, and then Tobin <laughs> will spend the next couple of Where's weeks. my dance scene? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then he'll come in rewriting all of his dialogue. Just so you know, the majority of his dialogue and all of his, and I'm going to call them romantically soliloquies, are, uh, he writes them all. 100%. He absolutely him. writes them all. Really? Yeah. When did that? When did that start? On the first movie? Or did that start later? Didn't have any word for, no. Any lines five, in the first two, maybe three? Yeah. You know, it started. With, it started. It started with two. Yeah. Uh, because I was working with Donnie Wahlberg, and Donnie had this very strong sense of truth: what he would say and what he wouldn't say, and he would say. Such a Boston guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, you know, we, Donnie and I, we had some time before we had to shoot. They were still working in the house. And so we had seven days, something like that. And uh, so we had time to rework those lines that took place where Donnie would go out of the room and he'd come back into the room. And we just were able to make it, uh, fill it with more tension, make it more cat and mouse between he and I, and also gave me an opportunity to say some things to him that were on John Kramer's mind and, and give some sort of raison d'etre to what he was tr what he was after what was what he was thinking about and uh, that was that was very cool to have that but opportunity but with like you just hearing him talk for 20 minutes would you not have him write his own stuff i mean listen to him he's better than a writer we've hired I mean, he knows this character. He, he's lived this character for 14 years. Well, I got to give credit to James Wan and Lee Wanell, who, because some of the concepts uh, were there in Saw One. Appreciate Your Life was there in Saw One. And that's the concept that most people really relate to. And things like the treatment of the uh, terminally ill by the medical community, that was there in Saw One. It comes back Again. in Saw Six. Yeah. So. A lot of the themes keep coming back, and uh, those are things that are on people's minds subconsciously. So when all of a sudden they come out in the film like that, people go, oh, that's what, that's what. And that's always rewarding to have a chance to create that kind of music. Um, For a 
Oh, you were raising the no, microphone. Sorry. No, just... Did you guys call this one Jigsaw to uh, sort of separate it from the original sequence of films? Just a little bit and yeah, kind of like you can bit. see it's this. Still the saw having... in it, but Jigsaw, it, it looks different, sounds different, feels different. Is it a Saw movie? Yeah, it's Saw on steroids is what no. this is. I thought Saw right. was on steroids. Right. What do you mean so this, this is Saw on steroids? Takes, <laughs> this this takes the, the entire franchise up a notch. But we really, you know, we really wanted, we didn't want people, the reason we didn't make one for a long time was we didn't want, you know, a lot of people would come pitch us Saw 8. Because we didn't want to make Saw 8. We just had no, no we didn't have interest. We just, we wanted it to be different. We wanted to be in that, you know, we wanted to be in that world. We wanted it to be a Saw movie, but we wanted, and it's like that thing you don't know until you, you don't, you don't know what you're looking for until you see it. We heard so many p different stories and we just, we were like, no, no. And, and then all of a sudden, we were like, yes. And it, it, we wanted to make a Saw movie, but just didn't want to make Saw 8, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that makes that perfect did, sense. Yeah. That makes perfect so, sense. Let's get some questions from the audience. This man has a microphone and perfect. a Comic-Con shirt on, so I think he's going to have a good question. <laughs> uh, so when you're coming up with the, the story or, and the characters, do you uh, know how they're, you're gonna, they're going to die, or uh, do you plan that out during making the characters, or is that that come later? Depends how nice they are. No, no. <laughs> no what, what we do is we come up with the story, right? The script, the story, the ideas, and we're kind of put death, death, you know, and the last thing we come up with are the traps. We really work, and I know, and hopefully you guys appreciate this, you know you go to a movie and you see a scene, or you, and you leave, you know, I keep talking about leaving the movie because you're talking about like, that could never happen. Well, if that guy died there, how is he? You know, and I don't want to disparage any movie. We really try to do logic. We really try to sit and talk about the lot. Is, is, is us and the writers and everyone the logic part? If A, you know what I mean? The logic. We can always figure out a way to do a cool trap. We can always do a way to do Charlie Clouser from Nine Inch Nails as the most amazing music. So our job is so that you guys don't think you got ripped off. Going, I can't believe they did that. How could they do that? So we really, really try to do logic first. I mean, a great story, then where it makes sense, with all our little twists and turns, and then they, we start adding color. So I know we did not, we did a horrible job of answering your question. <laughs> Next question. How is everyone? Hello. <laughs> so Jigsaw is very methodical and philosophical. What's his psychological process like while he's executing everything? Why he's what everything? Um, what's his psychological process like while he's executing everything? Orin just used the word logic, and I try to. Uh, you're talking about John's psychological process. Um, I ask myself a series of questions um, um, about um, what does he mean by what he says. I mean. Uh, I, I ask myself, uh, who am I, where am I, what do I want, when do I want it, and how am I going to get it? And I ask myself that in every single situation, and I answer those questions. And there's always a very simple logic, although someone may behave in a s sort of strange way, if you if you carefully examine even the most illogical kind of behavior, there's a simple logic to it. And I always want to know what I mean by what I say. And that can get very, very detailed. Uh, so I spend a lot of time asking myself those questions. And uh, when I ask myself, um, who am I, where am I, for example, that's the first question, where am I? All right, so that's the first question. That's a, it's, at the, it's at the bottom of an inverse triangle pyramid. And so I say, where am I? And I go, Portland, Oregon. I'll just pick a place, all right? So there's, there's the answer, but that opens up two questions. What part of Portland? Downtown Portland? Suburban Portland? That, that opens up four questions. Four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, 16 becomes 32. By the time you shoot, you'd have an answer to all the questions about what he means by that particular line. You haven't answered all the questions, so you hope you've answered enough of the questions. Maybe I'm up to 64 or 128. But the pyramid just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time you shoot, you haven't answered all the questions, but hopefully you've answered enough 
I've answered enough so that I don't go mad playing. Are you Jigsaw in real life? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of, co of course. Uh, you don't want to get too close to him. Yeah, yeah. That sounded but, like but, a riddle you would hear. No, well, uh, in, in Does that fact, answer your question, by the way? Yeah. That was definitely um, a more interesting answer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, yeah. I'm curious, like, so, I mean, you just asked. You would say that you have a lot of parallels then? Oh, absolutely. I'm very detailed. Uh, or So is he. I'm very committed. So is he. Um, there are certain, when you, so when you say that to me, I um, agree with Mark. I'm keeping him out there, you know. Uh, but uh, absolutely, uh, one of the ways you make a character most convincing is to draw him as close to yourself as you possibly can. And uh, that's what makes acting such a fascinating and magical experience. Well, isn't that also how it makes acting a bit, uh, I don't want to use the word easy, but I mean, when you say, how is this character like me? Because these are the things that I know how to do about me. Like, these are the things I know how to present about myself. Yes, but it, it's, it's one thing, it's one thing to, um, you, you want to find the things that, that draw you closest to the character, but it's never easy to be, I have seven or eight tapes going off in my head when I'm acting all at the same time. What do the producers want? Uh, what does the lighting uh, guy want? Don't step in that guy's light. The sound guy says, don't tap on the table, even though it's a great thing you're doing while you're saying your lines. What did the director just ask me to do? What are my lines? How do I relate to the person that I'm acting with? I have all these tape recordings going off in my head. It's never easy to act when there's 60 people standing around and you're trying to make something happen like it's happening for the first time and it's actually happening for the 30th time. So acting is not easy. Take but my be point. honest, you, re you really care what Orrin and myself oh, yeah, care yeah. about most, right? Uh, uh, well, I, yeah, because I know these guys are sitting in the other room going, you know, I, I, I remember saw three, saw three. We were trying to shoot a scene, and Shawnee and I are talking about, does she take the gun out of the back of the small of, of, small of her back or not? And Mark came into the room, and, and, and Darren's trying to be patient, and Mark's like, listen, we gotta get this scene, and we gotta get it now, so, yes. Like, we're going into overtime, we're leaving, figure it out and yeah. shoot it, yeah. all right? Yeah, we're right. done. That's, that's, where he, right. that's where he was coming from, because that's, that's what producers do. They get things done on time, so actors are also thinking about that. So acting is a multiple, we got Tobin and Shawnee spending 20 minutes trying to figure out if the gun's in the left pocket or the right pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going like, really? Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Shoot. I said... Yeah. Shoot one side each. Exactly. I, I, yeah, the, argument, the argument was about, do you take the gun out prematurely? She wanted to take the gun out prematurely. I said, don't take it out until you're going to use it. And so that's what we were talking about. Now you see our dilemma. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question right here. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what do you think has been the most rewarding uh, thing that you've gained from Jigsaw? So what is, like, what has Tobin gotten from Jigsaw? That's a good question. You stumped him. Look at it. Um, having the opportunity to work over a long period of time with a team and, and trying to contribute in every way that you can without, um, you know, there's a lot of parts to filmmaking. And uh, um, I've had a chance to work with uh, the studio, with Lionsgate, uh, because of the role that Jigsaw has in the franchise. And uh, I've never really had to work with a studio before, and so I've got to see the different parts of the studio and how studios work. And, uh, and working with uh, different writers, different directors, different locations on different schedules and just it's been an amazing window into filmmaking that I wouldn't have had uh, just as an actor doing coming and doing the role that actors do and then you go home and you see the movie eventually I've, I've had a much more of an integrated opportunity to be part of the whole picture. So that's a, a remarkable experience for an actor. It's like a 14-year relationship for us. When we started shooting, 
right around now. Um, 2003. 2003. Yeah, 14 years ago. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And do you guys feel like you want to make more after this too? We, we, we're superstitious. We, we've never talked about or thought about the next movie until that movie opens. But you don't want to be put in another situation where you've got like nine months to get the movie out it's there, It's going right? to happen. Because <laughs> we won't talk about it until October 28th. It's fine. It's a different... You know? it, it's so much easier now. I mean, I'm just saying technology-wise, it's so much easier to shoot and to... Yeah, we'd be fine. Oh, really? Than to make a movie seven, eight years ago? Well, or 13 years ago or 12 years ago. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, shooting 3D back then was so hard. Not that we'd shoot, we wouldn't do 3D again, but... Why is that? You know, I think the style of Saw, which is a lot of close, a lot of fast, is the exact opposite of what they want in 3D. They want it really long and really big depth of field, and you hold on to that so you can see this. And it, it's we tried, and it just it, the process for us, it just it's it's the antithesis of what the way we shoot and the way people want to see our movies, and the way 3D should be shot correctly. It's just, but I mean, it was a great process, and it's really cool, but it's just not the way we do it. Well, guys, uh, Jigsaw comes out on Halloween, right? October 27. October 27. October 27. Congratulations on the eighth Saw movie now, now called Jigsaw. It's franchise retitled Jigsaw, I think, at this point. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Give them a round of applause, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.